Hello dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. SIP Connect 1.4.0 has recently released from Microsoft Flight Sim PC version. I'll come back to that in a moment. With the Velocity 1 flight. One of the important fixes for this is the autopilot light. You may notice the autopilot's light not lit anymore. I'll press it on using my assign button. Let me just bring in the screen from Microsoft Flight Sim. I've got it running. There we go. So you can see here I don't have autopilot on. Keep an eye on that screen and keep an eye on this SIP panel at the back. I'll press the autopilot button. There you go. Comes on as it should. And it's here in the sim. Let me just show you. I want to turn it off. The SIP panel flashes as it does in the sim. Let me just show you that again. So it's on. And then it flashes and extinguishes. No longer do we have to put up with that constant autopilot light being on on the SIP panel with the Velocity 1 flight. A couple of things I'll mention here. This is not a firmware update. We're still on the latest firmware 1.4.0. That's not changed. This is a SIP Connect update. There's a difference. I'm going to show you how to install that, at least on the PC version. I'm hoping the Xbox version will follow soon so you also can get rid of the autopilot light constantly being on until you turn it on. Okay, let's not dilly dally. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so let's show you how to install SIP Connect. Very simple. Remember, this is for PC only at the moment. Hopefully, there's a future firmware coming for Xbox. It, that will actually be a proper firmware for the Velocity 1 flight, so you can get these features as well. So I'm going to link this website down below. You just scroll down a bit, go download here. Very simple. I'm going to download it again just to show you what happens with me. I'm using Edge. It may be the same for you with your browser. With Edge, you get a little icon here saying downloads, click on that, saying that it doesn't trust the file, basically. So I have to click on these three dots, go to keep, and then show more, and keep anyway. It's just saying, are you, are you sure you can trust it? Keep anyway. As it's from Turtle Beach, I'll trust it. I'll open my downloads folder. I don't believe there's anything there of sensitive uh, relevance. It's just Microsoft Flight Sim stuff. There's SIP Connect there. You can unzip it. I've unzipped it to a separate drive. My D drive, my Flight Sim's on my A drive. D drive is for anything else. So I've just unzipped it there. Ensure that you've got all these DLLs and the config in the same folder as the SIP Connect EXE, as the actual program. So all these DLLs and config need to be in the same folder. Here's a readme file. I'm going to show you this readme file in a moment. But let's just get back to SIP Connect. It's very simple. Have Flight Sim running. I've got Flight Sim running. I'm going to double click SIP Connect EXE 1.4.0. Well, that's just loading up. Let me just bring in my camera. So you can see my SIP panel. It's all green by default. Now, SIP Connect, we're going to your system tray down here. I hope you can see that. It may actually go in here. Typically, it will go in there. So you press the up arrow. And then you right-click SIP Connect and just choose your SIM. What will, watch what happens. Flight SIM should be up and running, but you can see the SIP panel at the back. The status indicator panel. A lot of the lights are turned off. And when we get in the sim, a lot of those lights should now be working. So there you go. SIP Connect. So with SIP Connect now, there's no more. You probably remember on PC, you would have to choose your sim, press connect and press start. All you have to do now is go to your SIP Connect icon and choose your sim. And then the status indicator. Indicator panel will be working properly as I'll show you in a moment. I did say, let me just get rid of that picture in picture. There we go, that's gone now. 
I did say that I'll show you a bit of the readme file. You can, if you download this, you can peruse this at your own pace. It's got a changelog. Just read through the changelog quickly. Added the ability to auto start with a spe specified game. I just showed you that. Just right click your SIP connect. It's difficult to see on the screen, but then just choose your SIM and then it auto starts. I did the ability to load a non-default profile at startup. I'm not going to show you that. Maybe I'll come back to that in the future. I did support for prepared 3D. If you have prepared 3D, that was the sort of go-to sim, basically, before Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Uh, it's added support for that. And fixed a bug with the autopilot light. It's a big one for us, isn't it? You can peruse the rest of this readme file. The only thing I want to show you here... If you run SIP Connect, you may come up that Windows has protected your PC. It may come up. Just go, just read through this. You show more info and then you run anyway. But read through that readme file if you have any difficulties. I'm going to link the dis uh, Turtle Beach Discord down below. Those are the people to go to if you're having trouble with this. I do not work for Turtle Beach, so go to them. What I'll do now, I'll go to my world map, go to Hudson International... Runway 27 in the Cessna 172, and I'll come back to show you the SIP Connect panel working all correctly. So let's show you the SIP Connect 1.4.0 in action here. At runway 27, as you can see, Hudson International Airport. Let me just bring in the camera. Now, I've got the camera on a tripod pointing at the SIP connect at the back, sorry, the SIP panel at the back. The left hand side, this is a prominent side where you've got parking brakes, of course. Turn it on and off. You've got your flaps. Let's put some flaps in, full flaps. And take them back up. Landing gear, vault slow because I've got my throttle out. And of course, autopilot, like I showed you before. Big thing is now it extinguishes. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll Flossle up, release the parking brake, use the triggers on the back of the Velocity one. They work absolutely fine as rudders, as you can see. It's the way I was flying for a long time. Velocity one playlist down below. Go and check out my recent video of my six-month update on the Velocity one flight rudders. Anyway, we're getting up to speed here. And you know that will do. Let's just take off. I've set an autopilot altitude for 1200 feet, synced my heading bug. So I'm going to go into autopilot mode. Autopilot will engage. Heading mode. Now, why is it coming down to earth again? Yeah, let's just increase that vertical rate of climb. <laughs> vertical speed. <laughs> and it looks like I've just caught that at the right time. May have to increase that a little bit more. As I'm in heading mode, I'll just turn my heading knob manually. Of course, I can do this with the Velocity 1 flight system. I've got it all set up. But sometimes I like to do it manually. So there you go. It's all working. And of course, problem was before this 1.4.0 SIP connect, the autopilot light would stay on even if you disconnect it. Now it flashes and goes off. And there you go. And let's just make sure the trim wheel's in sync. It is now. Love the trim wheel. It's just an unfortunate thing. That needs to be patched in. Please, a sobel where it doesn't go out of sync when you turn autopilot off. But it's, it's easy to catch. Autopilot back on. And we're climbing to our 1,200 feet. Just move the mouse because that's going to get confusing. But you can see the autopilot light. So a quick glance down at your SIP panel. And you can see we're in heading mode. So there you go, my friends. Let me know your thoughts on SIP Connect 1.4.0. It's only for PC at the moment. There's no doubt going to be an upcoming firmware update so that Xbox users can explore these delights as well. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, many more Flight Simulator videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.